Let's go above the board for an epic look at Gameland Games' Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea. Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea is a 4X game for one to four players, set in a fantasy realm full of elves, dwarves, orcs, and the ever-exotic humans. What's wrong with humans? Is that a serious question? I mean, how much time do we have? You mentioned 4X. Yes. 4X describes the pattern of play in a game like this. You begin the game controlling a single nation on an unexplored map. Hmm. I can't decide who to play. Yeah, this really is not the game for you. You start by exploring the world. Yeah, see, that doesn't really start with an X. Quiet, you. You then expand your territory to control more lands. Still not an X. You exploit the resources you find there. See, I see a grammatically inaccurate pattern forming here. And finally, you exterminate any enemies foolhardy enough to stand in your way. All those words start with an E. This is a 4E game. In Land, Air, and Sea, you essentially have two actions you can take during your turn. These actions are represented by these two tokens. Oh, well, that doesn't sound so complex. Each action can be used to do one of nine things. Never mind. If you take one of these first four capital actions, all of which involve building up your empire, your opponents may follow you and take the exact same action during your turn. I would have to make decisions about what to do even when it's not my turn? I told you, this is not the game for you. If you take one of these five command actions, all of which involve moving your armies or casting spells, your opponents can't copy you, and you take the action alone. You can cast spells? Only if you choose to. It all depends on how you want to shape your empire. Oh, my chest is getting tight. You should have a seat. Combat is handled with an elegant card system that has you choosing your army strategy on the battlefield. So many choices. The combat ends up being fast, fun, and doesn't bog down the game, no matter how large your armies become. Wait, how large can the armies get? Each region can hold five units per faction, so it never gets overwhelming. Yeah, speak for yourself. Your empire is mostly made up of serfs who can gather resources, work in your capital city, or act as fodder in your armies, and warriors who basically hit things. Okay, okay, I, I, I'm feeling better. Only two units. Each faction, however, has three unique heroes they can recruit, as well as a unique water vessel and airship. Okay. You can also build towers or increase the level of your capital up to three tiers. This all depends on the myriad decisions you make throughout the game. Okay, is this room hot, then suddenly cold, then really hot again? Additionally, these three expansions add in mercenaries you can hire. Oh, God. There's an expansion that adds siege engines. Oh, boy. The Order and Chaos expansion adds Lion Ken. Undead, lizard folk, and goblins to the mix, as well as expanding the game up to six players. Whereas the Pestilence expansion adds bird folk, merfolk, sunken continents, and giant flying islands. I think I see a bright light. Leaf? Leaf, did you pass out? Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea is a game for one to four people, 14 years or older, and takes 30 minutes per player to play. It's for people who love strategy games. Folks that can make decisions quickly. Those that believe that land and sea is just not enough. 
People who are blind to the letter E. Orcs, gotta represent. And Robert Picardo, <laughs> who will be playing this with me as a part of my ongoing therapy treatments. You, you do know he's not a real doctor, right? I mean, of course I do. He's a hologram. 